this tutorial is going to be on heart failure once again we'll be looking at etiology of heart failure clinical assessment of heart failure investigations to be performed in heart failure and management short-term symptomatic management and long-term prognostic management first of all let's look at the causative factors or etiological factors of heart failure most common cause is ischemic heart disease second is chronic hypertension other causes include exposure to cardiotoxins such as chronic alcohol intake chemotherapeutic agents such as anthracyclines or Herceptin chronic tachycardia viral cardiomyopathy certain viruses such as Coxsackie virus echo virus and power virus can lead to a cardiomyopathy how do patients present with present with when they have heart failure first of all in the history ask for fatigue dyspnea orthopnea and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea dyspnea orthopnea and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea is the classic triad of heart failure also ask about edema weight gain then you move on to physical examination starting from the periphery check the pulse usually in heart failure when it's severe the pulse may be 30 and sometimes you may feel uh, pulses alter hands. check the blood pressure if it's chronic hypertension acts as an etiology you may find patient to be hypertensive severe heart failure when the mechanical dysfunction is quite significant the blood pressure may be quite low also uh, look for the breathing pattern the patient is tachypneic or dyspneic in severe heart failure patients may show a uh, small's breathing look at the jugular venous pressure and the pulsation look at the morphology and the elevation of jugular venous, jugular venous pressure move on to the mucosa see whether the patient is well hydrated or dehydrated now we move on to the precordium feel the apex beat with its, its shifted laterally you may also be able to auscultate a s3 gallop also be attentive to murmurs of regurgitation such as mitral regurgitation or aortic regurgitation that can contribute to heart failure it's important to establish patients functional capacity which has a diagnostic purpose as well as a prognostic value the functional capacity of a patient is defined by the New York Heart Association classification system the patient has no limitation of physical activity the patient is well compensated and he belongs to NYHA class 1 the patient has slight limitation of physical activity comfortable at rest but usual physical activities cause dyspnea and fatigue the patient belongs to functional class 2 slightly decompensated functional class 3 has two components a and b class 3 a in, is signified by marked limitation of physical activity however the patient is comfortable at rest in class 3b there's marked limitation of physical activity comfortable at rest but minimal exertion can trigger significant fatigue and palpitations as well as dyspnea class 4 is significant dyspnea whilst at rest together with orthopnea and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea this is essentially a forerunner to acute pulmonary edema hence remains a medical emergency then we are going to look at investigations in heart failure usually you look at your standard blood profile full blood count anemia can trigger 
or can be caused by heart failure. Electrolyte function, electrolyte shift can happen in heart failure such as hyponatremia when patients have uh, excess fluid on board. Look at the renal function. Renal function impairment can worsen heart failure and also heart failure can trigger acute renal failure and worsening of chronic renal failure. Look at the ECG. Look for any evidence of previous myocardial infarctions, tachycardia, bundle branch blocks that usually are associated with severe heart failure. Also, look at the chest x-ray, very important, looking at any evidence of pulmonary congestion, pulmonary plethora, or curly B lines, or even pleural effusions when it's quite severe. Check for cardiac biomarkers, troponin, CK, CKMB. If it's elevated, maybe a recent myocardial event, ischemic event, triggered uh, the exacerbation of heart failure. Echocardiogram is extremely useful in the setting of heart failure. It gives you a functional assessment of left ventricular ejection fraction and left ventricular filling profile, particularly useful when there's diastolic impairment. Also, it gives you important information about valvular function, uh, right heart function, and also estimates of intracardiac pressures. These are important parameters to record at baseline, useful for uh, your management strategy, and also it's important to important for chronic monitoring of heart failure to assess whether the left ventricular ejection fraction has recovered in the long term. This is done by performing serial echocardiograms when indicated clinically over intervals of three to four months. How do you manage heart failure? Management of heart failure involves essentially acute management of symptoms and then putting in place preventative therapy to avoid exacerbations and decompensations and also prognostic therapy to improve patient's quality of life and also uh, quantity of life. If the patient is decompensated, patient needs diuretic therapy. The most potent diuretics are loop diuretics. Additional benefits can be uh, obtained by combined diuretic therapy such as uh, addi addition of other diuretics such as thiazide diuretics or spironolactone. Spironolactone has additional prognostic benefits in the long term for heart failure patients because it helps prevent myocardial fibrosis associated with uh, cardiac pathology. Also oral or intravenous uh, nitrate will be helpful essentially to uh, decrease the preload and uh, improve cardiac function and help decongestion. ACE inhibitors are useful uh, for symptoms benefit as well as long-term prognosis. Beta blockers, particularly the third generation beta blockers such as Carvidolol, Bisoprolol and Nebivolol, useful in uh, improving overall prognosis and life expectancy in heart failure and decrease recurrent exacerbations. It's important that commencement of beta blocker therapy is deferred till the patient is well compensated and is shifted from class 4 to class 3 or class 2 New York Heart Association uh, functional classification. Angiotensin 2 converting uh, angiotensin 2 receptor antagonists are useful particularly for patients who do not tolerate ACE inhibitors. However, the evidence is not as convincing as it is for ACE inhibitors. Hydralazine combined with isosorbide dinitrate has been useful uh, for patients who do not tolerate ACE inhibitors. So this can be uh, considered as an alternative to uh, ACE inhibitor therapy. Amlodipine uh, can be useful in heart failure. Digoxin can be useful, particularly if the patient is tachycardic or in uh, atrial fibrillation with a rapid ventricular response. Oral anticoagulation uh, is important if the patient has uh, atrial fibrillation or other uh, procoagulant uh, tendencies. 
there is a novel treatment modality called cardiac resynchronization therapy, uh, which is essentially inserting a biventricular pacemaker to improve the syn synchrony of systolic function of left ventricle and right ventricle. This has been useful for people with a intrinsic cardiac conduction defect as evidence in the ECG with a prolonged QRS complex. So this is also useful for patients who do not or do not fully respond to medical management that we discussed just now. In addition, those who are resistant to all forms of therapy may be benefited from uh, what we call a left ventricle assist device and this can be a bridging therapeutic option for patients who are awaiting cardiac transplantation. In addition to pharmacotherapeutic measures, you need to put in place uh, other measures to prevent exacerbation of heart failure. These include fluid restriction, particularly uh, to a maximum of 1.5 liters a day, salt restriction, and also gentle exercise, which will improve patient's uh, functional capacity and also uh, overall well-being. It's important to get the patient involved in a multidisciplinary ambulatory care heart failure management program. These programs have significant benefits to patients to improve their overall prognosis and also prevent recurrent exacerbations and rehospitalizations. In addition, adequate patient education is of fundamental importance in the management of heart failure because it's a chronic condition most often patients will have to live forever with. Some patients who have persistently low ejection fraction may benefit from implantable cardiac defibrillators because as we know the most common cause for mortality in heart failure patients is malignant ventricle tachyarrhythmias and ventricle fibrillation. So therefore, it is important uh, if suitable, the patient is referred for a AICD implantation.